Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we have for you here. Is there a debt asset bubble? Some think so, and the implosion will be fast. We're going to talk about VET, HBAR. We're going to talk about Voyager Digital, One Central African Republic, ditching Bitcoin. We'll explain. We got Peter Brandt in the news. We got Circle USDT, Rosie Rios, BIS. We're going to talk about that. Quant, Ripple, and Stellar. Oh, you're going to want it. Is XRP permissioned? or permission lists. We're going to get into it. XRP to clear winner, and Michael Arrington reminds us, XRP is a fantastic currency. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great global monetary system reset. Is XRP a part of it? Let's roll that intro and find out. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Dig Perspectives at the top of the screen. Everything that we're talking about here today. Right now, we're at $945 billion market cap for cryptocurrency. The market is up $2.7 billion. Shout out to Britta, who is a assistant for us and handles a lot of social media manager responsibilities. And we send the best to her mother-in-law, who was involved in a little accident yesterday. And we hope that she has a speedy recovery. Yeah, all the best to you guys. 20,000 plus for Bitcoin right now, and we see 20,100 plus, 1,100 plus for Ethereum. And XRP is at 32 cents, ladies and gentlemen. We're off by 4.3 on the seven day and up by two plus percent on the 24 hour. Right now, ranging between 31 and 33 cents. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, things are uncertain. Be greedy when others are fearful. Or, where do you stand when the dollar's in question? Where do you stand when the markets are crashing? And there really seems to be no correlation. One of those places that I stand is at Masterworks. And I put my money where my mouth is just a couple days ago and bought into another Christopher Wool painting right here. And you can do the same too. I tell you, you know, the last time that these guys sold some paintings, if you invested $45,000, you'd have come away with 60 grand. How about that one? And there's some incredible, incredible um, price appreciations to similar works here that you can see that absolutely crush the S&P. This is what some of the richest people in the world have been doing by buying complete paintings. And here you can buy actual shares. Make sure you check out the link underneath the video for that. Right now, buckle up. They're saying an implosion will be fast when it happens and to hold on to your seats. The massive money creation that we've experienced is going to lead to a debt asset bubble, which is about to burst, say a lot of economists. And I tell you, I'm inclined to agree with them that at some point we're going to see a pay to piper moment. Now, to speak to being greedy when others are fearful. That's exactly what I did with VET, and it's exactly what I'm about to do at HBAR. Now, none of this is financial advice. They're just my digital perspectives, and I'm just sharing with you what I'm looking at and the things that are interesting me. Now, look at this. VET is something I have held and not held and held and not held, and right now I'm holding it again. And I do believe in VET and what it's doing. And again, everybody has to make their own decision. I'm not telling you what to do. But looking at what could be a potential upside here at $1.35 for VET, knowing right now where it currently is, which I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, and I will double check this while we're talking here, VET is currently sitting at... Two cents. That's where VET is. VET is sitting at two cents. There it is right there. So they're talking about a projected jump at some point over a dollar. We could hit a dollar 35. Well, I could tell you right now, I would not be upset about any of that. That's from Egg Grad Crypto. And they have another uh, post here about HBAR, which is something I've been very excited about for a long time, too. They're really talking about the chance of HBAR having a huge jump over $2, $2.72. You could see that kind of a pop take place. Now, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be upset about any of that. HBAR is something I really dig a lot too. And currently right now, HBAR, I think is uh, six cents. Is that what it is? I keep a lot of these 
um, yeah, it's six cents. And I just wanted to check and see if it differed from the chart, but it doesn't. So I could definitely be excited about that for H bar as well. Right here, let's talk about this because there's more uh, watershed moment taking place. And we know that we reported Voyager Digital is was in trouble. And here they have actually filed for bankruptcy. It is truly official at this point, And I take no pleasure in sharing it. But that is the moment we are in in crypto and this is another moment and we better pay very close attention about the things that you hold in your portfolio and why just in the central african republic which adopted bitcoin as legal tender in april as el salvador did is poised to ditch bitcoin after a lack of demand and plans to release their own central bank digital currency well, Linda P. Jones, rightfully so, says here, but 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 I, I heard Bitcoin was going to end governments and handle global payments. You know, it's so funny that the Bitcoin maxis, you know, they start off with this whole we're anti-establishment, anti-bank, but they cheer in the street every time a hedge fund or they hear about banks wanting to buy and hold crypto or, or like Bitcoin. What I find funny about that is they don't realize then they, you know, in a turn of uh, events you know they seem to cheer on the hedge funds for saying oh finally they're going to hold bitcoin they get it too uh what i think bitcoin maxis don't understand is is that these large large players in the world that dip their toe and take a position in bitcoin are the same ones i believe at some point who will wreck it veteran trader peter brant says there is no way he would hold assets in tether while Tether continues to release third-party attestations of its crypto holdings, detractors of the stable coin have called for a full audit instead. And you guys know where I'm at if you've been listening to me for any length of time here. I am very, very concerned about what happens to Tether because it has been made clear, certainly with the undertow from the regulators and governments, that Tether is in the crosshairs. And it will be interesting to see how this shakes out. And while we're watching it shake out, what I believe is the chosen one, the unofficial official U.S. digital dollar, I believe, circles USD coin on track to topple Tether as the top stable coin this year. And it may be sooner than we think. At the current rate, and with less than $10 billion now separating the two stable coins, USD coin can surpass USD tether by market capitalization in a few months, if not weeks. Interestingly, USD coin has already flipped USD tether regarding real volume atop the Ethereum blockchain. Now, talking about surpassing it in market capitalization in a few months, if not weeks, I ask you this. What do you think would happen to the market capitalization of USD Tether if a market regulator were to sue them? I think Circle would take the number one spot immediately. This here from Jim Rickards, it's an article from the gold mining maven Frank Geistra here. And I tell you, it is powerful. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you here, but it is an article that he is sharing his opinion here where he's saying why the dollar, the U.S. dollar, will be replaced as the dominant global currency. Again, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you here, but I do want to go through this. He says, I expect at the very least an alternative trading currency to emerge and compete with the dollar. Well, that sounds a lot like XRP to me, ladies and gentlemen. This new currency would be used solely for settling trades between nations as opposed to a reserve currency that central banks normally use for diversification. Admittedly, this is sheer speculation, says Frank Geistra, and eventual outcome is anyone's guess. Well, you know what? Welcome to the party, Frank. And listen, first of all, Frank is 
is a brilliant mind and a hugely successful uh, gold mining and investor in gold. Uh, so I, I, I say this from a point of appreciation and respect, no condensation in this. Uh, uh, <laughs> but what I could say is, is that this pretty much is what we're all talking about every single day in the Ripple XRP world, right? This is what we're talking about here. You know, uh, he goes on to talk about how, you know, the history of the previous uh, reserve currencies. I don't want to stretch it out and get into it, but it is a fantastic read. And he talks about the sanctions from SWIFT and how they've done nothing but allow Russia to strengthen the ruble and their gold position and gold behind the ruble. It is a mess. And I believe Frank has got his thumb right on top of it. Bank of International Settlements, the central bank of all central banks, there are now four live retail CBDCs in the world and pilots in 29 districts. 72 central banks have communicated publicly about their CBDC work and the tone of the speeches is more positive. <laughs> As Rosie Rio says, the train has left the station, ladies and gentlemen. And if we go back to what Frank has talked about here, why the U.S. dollar will be replaced as the dominant global currency sooner than you think, I believe that we understand that the release and the pilot and the launch of central bank digital currencies will not happen without what Frank said here which is an alternative trading currency to emerge to compete with the dollar and act as a bridge mechanism for settling trades. If I could add that in, that's where I think we are. And this from Anders L. This is from actually, and shout out to Anders L who does great research on here. And he says, I found the image uh, from quantpedia.org. So thank you to Anders L for sharing that. And this is an image right here that shows the Overledger Enterprise Permission Blockchains, Hyperledger, Corda, JPM Quorum, Ethereum, and Ripple public permissionless blockchains that shows Bitcoin, Stellar, Ethereum, IOTA, NEO. Pretty interesting to have enterprise permissioned blockchains and Ripple listed in a permissioned blockchains. Could they be talking about, this is the actual document where it came from in the website, just to show everyone here. And again, shout out to Anders L for that information. But it makes me wonder, are we talking about the open permissionless XRP ledger or is Quant talking about the Ripple private ledger? That is the question to be answered there. But when it comes to knowing that XRP's focus is cross-border payments and we are clear winner in that area, this is Zoe Cruz, who was co-president of Morgan Stanley, now at Ripple. Listen to what she said back in this particular interview. The top five to 10 crypto assets, cryptocurrencies. And to me saying, I'm only gonna put Bitcoin, uh, I'm only going to invest in Bitcoin because it's the current winner or the digital gold as they call it, is equivalent to say that in the early 2000s, you're only gonna invest in one internet stock. <laughs> and I don't need to tell you whether it's social media, uh, Facebook didn't exist uh, by and large. I mean, Netscape was the browser of choice with 75% market share. Google is the leader now and Netscape doesn't exist. So to me what an incredible point while we're in the middle of this watershed moment for the blockchain and crypto space. What an incredible point. I say this all the time about Bitcoin being like the first cell phone or being like the Netscape and Ethereum being like the AOL. Will they be here forever? I don't know if they will in the same capacity they are today. Let's keep listening. To me, it's the equivalent thing. I don't know. There will be winners and losers, but uh, I wouldn't want to have Bitcoin end, end up being the uh, Netscape of, of your investment opportunity. And again, the way I look at the diversification, each of those currencies was designed differently. It has underbellies, all of them do, but it also has clear winner uh, characteristics in the alley that they chose to compete in. So Bitcoin is the digital gold. Um, 
So when I talk about diversifying, it's the idiosyncratic risk of that particular cryptocurrency. So the pluses and the minuses of Bitcoin, digital gold, the oldest, it made a lot of people rich. So you have a lot of passionate people that would, you know, be very uh, good at defending it. And it's construct. It's un and consequently, very quickly, AOL, Netscape made a lot of people rich. Where are they today? Underbelly is actually, uh, it costs a lot of energy. And I don't need to tell you ESG, environment, social governance is the new, new thing. Uh, if you, the bigger the blocks, the more successful Bitcoin becomes, the more that's an issue. <laughs> um, XRP uh, is the alley it has chosen. It is the leader in that class. Uh, is basically the cross-border payment system. Uh, I agree with everything that she just said there, and it is the clear winner for the cross-border payment system, no doubt about it. And here's evidence of it back when Michael Arrington told us just how easy it was to send money and how cheap it was. Is XRP is a fantastic currency to use for, among other things, hedge funds. We need to move a lot of money very quickly. We make investments all over the world. Our LPs come from all over the world. And using banks to move money is a pain in the ass. I mean, it takes a day or two to move money around the world. And with XRP, our, our very first close was 50 million. We moved that money in, and I'm not shitting you, in like three seconds. And I think it cost 20 or 30 cents. Um, that's, that, you really need to think about that. Is yeah, no doubt about it. That is an amazing, fantastic currency right there. Because if you can move money in two to three seconds, you have really just toppled the entire path and traditional system of how you move value around the world. That's what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about this article coming back to Frank Giestra says he expected the very least an alternative trading currency. So do I, Frank. And I expect it to be at some degree XLM and XRP to serve in those realms. And I don't know if it's to replace the, the dominant global reserve currency so much as it's to complement it. That's how you're able to stay and be a real solution. It's not to replace it the way Bitcoin set out to do. It's to complement it. That's where I'm going to make the shift on that. And that's where I'm putting my money and my hedge on this day for what's to come. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.